one maxed out MacBook Pro, one iPad Pro, one Springboard Bootcamp. Yo, this is Oscar, and I am coming back to the design world. Will these tools help me become a professional product designer within these next couple of months? Welcome to my series on Dudeify, my journey to becoming a product designer. Hey, yo, guys, welcome back to another episode on Dudeify, my journey to becoming a product designer. So it's been, what, week 10, 11? I kind of lost track, but it's really, really hard to, to keep track of it. But anyways, um, I did the, the, the interviews. It went great. I did four participants. I interviewed four participants out of the five that I was supposed to, but it was fine. So we moved along with it and the responses were amazing. I really got like a lot of insight based on the responses and I was able to complete my my affinity map, my empathy map, and my personas, and also how my we statements. I'll talk about that later on. So let's go quickly over my presentation. So this presentation, I'm going to have to um, talk with my with different mentor that I haven't spoken before and actually present this. It's actually very important to be able to present because in for designers, UX researchers, UI designers, um, product designers have to re uh, do a lot of presentations and have to be confident about it. So practicing early on is actually a good thing and I encourage you guys to do it. So before we move on, I wanted to thank everyone for subscribing. I'm so thankful and happy that I'm getting more subscribers and you guys are supporting my channel, my videos, watching them. I really, really like, like really thank you guys for doing that. I also would appreciate it if you're not subscribed to subscribe and I'll be meaningful to me you know so let's move on with the video so this is my presentation it's very um, very basic just uh, white background black text so people are reading understanding nutrition and labels and values that was basically my topic um, and the problem I stated the problem so the beginning slides I actually got it from the research plan that I did previously i believe i made a video on that i'll include it in the description below or somewhere on this video so you guys can check it out and background uh the same thing as the research plan where i got like the the hypothesis and the supporting statement so the the, the background was americans struggling uh to read nutrition labels and understand values better it's been like a problem for more than a decade and it's has just been put like on the side and also it's critical for diet and health so what you eat influences your health of course and health problems health problems like diabetes and high blood pressure um, high cholesterol blood clots uh, strokes and all that that relates to your uh, a person's eating habits so including visuals is actually very very useful for for a presentation also doing outlines just not including so much text so this is this is I included images here the hypothesis I made it like a little shorter than it was but if people are taught how to understand and read nutrition labels and values, they will actually eat better and overall be healthier. Also, like I also think that people that learn learn and understand nutrition labels and values will actually teach others too. But that's not in my analysis. But that's what I, I got over time from my interviews. And then your objectives and goals. So get qualitative data and the success and difficulties of people when reading nutritional labels and understanding values. So the screener, the screener, uh, I screened 18 people on a Google form and 13 questions were asked. So on the affinity map, it was very, very helpful because I was able to get like a lot of their data from the interviews into post notes and I put them all over the wall and 
It was very like time consuming, but it was like incredibly useful. Like I strongly recommend to do an affinity map if you're if you're doing um, UX research. So after that, I was able to like get a lot of a lot of data from the affinity map. So just putting everything on the wall, and then after that, categorizing each each insight or each thing into groups. So that's what I did. That way I was able to know like what their insights were. Like if, if they were teaching, trying to like teach or how they read nutrition labels, how they learned them and their understanding, understanding knowledge of it and their feelings, advice. So feelings is really, really good to um, ask during your interview process and before so I can help you with your empathy map. The empathy map, we'll be talking about it after this, but it's very, very helpful. Just just letting you know. So for considerations, they also like um, give out considerations, visuals, resources, and learning and their difficulties and struggles. It was it was awesome. Like I got a lot, a lot of information based on that, based on the interviews and yeah, it was great. So this is basically my my grouping of the affinity map. You know how like everything was in straight lines. So I ended up categorizing each and that's how I labeled each group into their own category. So let's move on with the empathy map. I was able to create an empathy map. I created a Venn diagram because I felt like it would be very useful for my empathy map. I ended up providing a Venn diagram because it provides what the difference is and the common and the common things they, they have. So I got this information from my screeners and I was able to conclude from that is that like they're all motivated and all ages um, were, were um, didn't matter like the age, but they were all like um, willing to learn and it and and the gender also like didn't really uh, matter because all of them made like different responses and kind of kind of like they had the same in common in common so also like they were all visual learners they all learned visually and two questions that stood out to me as like in the screener was how confident and how confident like you feel reading nutrition labels and values and also like the level of like, expertise so that's how i was able to kind of like make this also based on like the rest of them of course but those are the two ones that stood out to me the most so from here i was able to create two users uh one beginner and one intermediate and proficient so like the beginner had low and low to low medium confidence while opposed to the intermediate and proficient, they had high medium to high confidence. So they're more, more, more confident in what they actually knew. So that's, I got the, the affinity map and I ended up um, using that data into the empathy map. So it's all like a puzzle guys. Like it's all like you get a lot of information and you have to put it together. And then if you do like an affinity map, that affinity map will help you with your empathy map. And then the empathy map will, will, will help from the affinity map. You'll get help. You'll, you'll get information from the affinity map into the empathy map. And then the personas, which we'll talk about after this. So here we have the empathy map. Do think, feel, say. So it's important to know what they actually do as opposed to what they say and what they feel as opposed to what they think and it's really great like a great insight to actually know like the overall like how they their their emotions towards uh the product design or whatever and this is the actual the intermediate and proficient user i thought it was it was great um and then from there I got the persona. I labeled the persona as a starter and the other one was the expert. So it's good to name your personas in order to like have a reference. So like let's say you're you're working 
for a project in, in, in a work environment and then it's it's very good to rely on like a persona instead of like no uh, nothing really to rely on so like oh I designed this design based on the starter persona or the expert persona it's actually very very uh, useful when you're uh, when you're when you're trying to like back up your design or your or your your ideas and also personas are actually good for like everyone it's not only good for designers it's actually good for directors and uh, the sales the sales the salespeople um, basically anyone in the in the, anywhere in the teams is actually very helpful so here the starter I I put a name location age and a quote for both the starter and the expert and I really thought of an idea of to put like a like a a bar meter of how their um, their motivation was so like willingness to learn was high for a starter and confidence was low though and fear was high and the control was low so and then the the goals were to, to lean learn and read and understand nutritional labels and values practice better eating habits uh, learning general information so frustrations were you know, too low confidence, worried about what they were consuming, not fully aware of nutritional labels and values. So their problem was lacking knowledge and need more instructional content. And their needs what expects instructional and guidance, a one-to-one -one interaction. So basically the entire breakdown of, of the, the physiology, measurements, values, and everything else. So the expert here, and the motivation was willingness to learn was high, confidence was high, fear was low, control was high. So it's kind of like kind of like the opposite in a way of as opposed to the starter and they have more in control. So goals was to learn and memorize physiology. So learn more in depth and learn more research for information. So what the frustrations were were difficult in reading, understanding and also confusing to keep track of. So problems were forgetting, understanding food labels as a whole entity. I did notice that the expert would um, would know like a lot of information based on, on a nutritional label, but they wouldn't know like the, the whole thing as a whole. And that's why I included it in the problem. So needs was reassurance and detailed explanatory process. And also, it's it's good when you're creating personas to include a quote that they said. So here for the expert, they said, forgot the physiology or labels are too generic based on a 2000 calorie diet, stuff like that. And for the starter, I did watch videos, read books or research to learn more. So and also, like when you're doing a persona, it doesn't really have to be this way. Uh, you could also look at other personas online and see what they actually do. Be creative about your persona and do like designs based on like the responses and and stuff like that so like for me and the motivation part and willingness to learn and stuff like that that was like um that was that's that's my design uh thought of doing when when comparing like the those, the, the motivations between those two so the insights was i got from both of them was that from from the whole process of this was that participants mentioned they know how to read the labels although they don't fully understand them most people don't look at nutritional labels and values. I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, most people aren't fully aware of the physiology, daily recommendations, daily values, measurements, and percentages. So this is all related to like nutrition, guys. Um, I, I come from a background in nutrition, so it's very like well known for me. And I want people to actually know more about it, and that's why I'm actually I picked this topic for my for my capstone. So. Last part is how might we questions. So it's digging a little more. So, so it's like how might we blank question in order to get more information and try to like help you in the design process. So like you have, you want to come up with a question that isn't too broad that you could come up with a lot of solutions towards that, but also you don't want to come up with the solution that is only one solution towards that question because you want to like have more more room for that so you have to come in between the middle of those two from very broad 
and from composed to the very specific so like in the middle so where you get like a little like um more solutions than just one but not that many so hopefully that makes sense and these are my how we how might we questions so how might we provide more confidence less fear more control to to users and how might we explain it in that but in a clear way how might we impact long-term memory as well provide like the best visuals for the user and how might we make it easy to read and understand also how might we categorize the information and yeah so i thought they're really good how might we questions and hopefully they could help me uh, provide a solution for them later on in the process so don't forget to subscribe also so you can keep track of what my future videos are so also turn on the notification bar so you can keep track of my updated videos too uh yeah so that's basically it for my presentation i'm going to be presenting this again to a mentor that i haven't talked to before and pretend they're a stakeholder and i'm not actually that nervous because i feel like pretty confident in my 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 my, my what is it I'm actually like not that nervous, so I'm, I'm pretty confident about like my presentation. Although it's normal to get nervous, you know. So, yeah, for for the next one, um, peace out.